so good morning all uh, so in the first module so we have three topics so one is torsion so we have finished uh, even including problems and the second topic is on springs and third one is on uh, you know uh, uh, beams which are subjected to unsymmetrical bending you know these these topics will be included in the next modules as well okay so here we are going to study on springs so what are the different types of springs available you know what is the loading pattern of that and what are the real applications of springs where we go the they're going to use everything we are going to study in the springs okay so usually springs are uh, elastic in members okay so usually they basically they made up of metals so and that can be twisted and they can be pulled they can be stretched by applying some force so what happens to it for the springs usually so usually springs will regain its original shape so when the force is released so we call that as a resilience isn't it so resilience is a term where we use uh, when a member is storing some energy to regain its original shape and size so in other words it can also be termed as a resilient members all springs are resilient members why because they are elastic in nature so they regain its original shape and size when they are unloaded and the behavior of the springs are linear okay so if you see the graph between load versus deflection so the graph will be linear linear indicates that member behaving elastically isn't it so that what about uh, springs so let me show you a few videos on springs so by that you can able to visualize uh, whatever the content are going to deliver uh, in the coming classes on springs okay so based on that we can discuss uh, Okay, uh, more on this. So let me show you that. Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Imagine coming home after having a long day and jumping on your bed. The comfort of your bed feels like that one thing that you would have been thinking about throughout your day. Now, what if you didn't have a comfy bed or had to sit on the ground? Well, that would be highly discomforting. The bed gives the comfort, which the floor doesn't. The beds are made more comfortable by the filler material that is used, and sometimes they also use springs in them. When we push on these springs, they get squeezed. Once again. Guys, can you able to see the video? Sir, no, sir. No, ah. One second. Now? Yes, sir. Yes. Are you able to see the video, ma? Are you? Yes, sir. Video yes, condition sir. okay. So can I play now? Yes, sir. Okay, then yeah. So please go through and you can note down uh, applications of the springs also. Okay. So, because if you, while you're watching the video, so you will come across uh, many applications and there are different types of springs available. So, based on that, you can please note down a few important uh, applications from that. Okay, because that is also one of the important interview questions and even for your uh, examinations also, it might be useful. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Imagine coming home after having a long day and jumping on your bed. The comfort of your bed feels like that one thing that you would have been thinking about throughout your day. Now, what if you didn't have a comfy bed or had to sit on the ground? Well, that would be highly discomforting. The bed gives the comfort which the floor doesn't. The beds are made more comfortable by the filler material that is used and sometimes they also use springs in them. When we push on these springs, they get squeezed and when the pressure is released, 
the spring is restored back to its original shape. We don't actually realize it, but a lot of our daily use items have springs in them. These include things like our watches, remotes, automobiles, garage doors, and a lot of other items. In this video, we will explain to you what springs are and what are their various types. We will further discuss each of them in detail. So the first question, what are springs? Springs are mechanical devices that deflect or compress when a load is applied on it and restores to its original shape when that load is removed. It's used for pulling, pushing, winding, supporting, and sometimes lifting. Depending on the need, springs are classified into the following major types. Helical spring, torsion spring, conical and volute spring, laminated or leaf spring, disc or belleville spring, and special purpose spring. Conical and volute spring, laminate. Guys, you can note down all these springs. So these are the different types of springs available in the real applications. Please, please note down them. Hel helical spring, torsion spring, conical and volute spring, laminated or leaf spring, disc or belly belly spring, special purpose springs. So these are the different types of springs available. Might be you may not come across uh, all these technical names of the springs, but the if you see the application of that spring, so it will definitely link with the types of any one of these things. Okay, so the by that very very important. So if someone asks you what are the different types of springs, you can able to list out all these, and you can write one or two applications on each spring. Okay, please note down all these. Helical spring torsion spring, conical and volute, laminated or leaf spring, disc or belly belly spring, special purpose springs. So once you're done, please let me know. By that I will, uh, you know, start playing. Finished? Am I not sure, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Nated or leaf spring, disc or bellville spring, and special purpose springs. Let's start with helical springs. Helical springs are the most commonly used springs. As the name suggests, these springs are in the shape of a helix. This type of springs can store energy when it is compressed and releases the energy when the compressive force is released. It can also withstand forces when it is pulled. These types of springs are commonly seen in the suspensions of automobiles. They are further divided into closed coil helical springs and open coil helical springs. Okay, so note down, first, first spring is helical spring. So helical spring is again classified into two categories. One is closed coil helical spring, open coil helical spring. So you can note down straight away. Okay. So there are two types of helical springs. One is closed coil. The other one is open coiled helical spring. So I will show you how the cold coil helical spring looks like and the application of those and open coiled as well and the application of them. Right. Okay. Guys, uh, so please respond uh, immediately. So by that I can able to know so whether the, my voice or you know things are reaching to you. Okay, at least one or two. Fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Springs. In a closed coil helical spring, the helices are placed at an angle less than 10 degrees and each coil is aligned over each other. They are usually employed in areas where stretching needs to be resisted. For example, garage door assemblies, wise grip pliers, etc. Open coil helical springs, on the other hand, have the helices placed at an angle greater than 10 degrees. They are used to resist compression and are also known as compression springs. These are used in auto injectors, ballpoint pens, etc. 
Next, we have torsion springs. A torsion spring. So, what you understood from closed coil helical spring and open coil helical spring, Amma? See, closed coil helical spring. So, so, so you usually if you see the spring, so spring will have a coil, right, with a proper diameter, and the pitch di pitch distance between one coil to the other coil. Okay, I mean one ring to the other ring. So we'll make with some an angle, isn't it? So when the angle between one ring to the other ring is less than ten degrees, so which is very close to each other, they are called closed coil helical spring. Okay. So when the springs are not very close to each other, when the angle of uh, one ring to other ring so is greater than ten degrees, it is treated as open coil helical spring. So that's what. They are telling when the the open coil helical springs are usually used in your jetta pens. If you see the spring in your pen, so the distance between one ring to other ring is usually more distance. So that we call it as a pitch, isn't it? So like that, we have to understand where we can make use of closed coil helical springs and open coil helical springs. Okay, and the next one is this. I think is similar to a closed loop helical spring, except that in this spring. The ends of the spring are extended away from the axis of the spring in a non-helical manner. They are used to store twisting force. If you notice a cloth clip, then you would have observed that when you press the ends of the clips, the clip gets widened. As soon as you release the ends, the clip is restored back to its original position. In torsion springs, a torque is developed in the opposite direction, which helps the spring to restore back to its original position. These springs also find their application in mouse traps, door hinges, etc. The next type of okay. So what you understood? So there is another spring which is called a torsional spring. So till now, uh, you know only springs are subjected to compression and springs are subjected to tension. But there is a spring which is called a torsional spring. So if you have seen in the uh, applications, usually the spring is subjected to torsion, isn't it? So when you press your clip, so where the spring is not subjected to compression, it is under torsion. Torsion means spring is try to, you know, uh, shear within its circumference. Okay. So that is how the I mean uh, torsional springs are usually derived. Okay. So I will show you again. So by that you can able to understand it. That when you press the ends of the clips, the clip gets widened. As soon as you release the ends, the clip is restored back to its original position. In torsion springs, a torque is developed in the opposite direction, which helps the spring to restore back to its original position. These springs also find their application in mouse traps, door hinges, etc. The next type of spring is the conical and volute springs. You would have noticed these springs when you inserted new batteries into your TV remote. These type of springs are also termed as conical springs. Conical springs are similar to helical springs. When loaded upon, they compress a lot more than helical springs. They are used in battery contacts, garden actuators, etc. Volute springs are similar to conical springs. When compressed, the smaller coils slide inside the larger coils. They are used in places where large compressive forces are to be exerted on small areas. The fourth type of spring is the laminated or leaf spring. When traveling on the road in an automobile, it is quite well known that we will experience the undulations in the road. To reduce the impact of these undulations, laminated or leaf springs are used in cars and other. Guys, so please mute yourself. So someone unmuted. So please mute. Saigiran, mute. Guys, can you see the video? Yes, sir. Yeah. The larger automobiles. These springs are made of metal and are. So these springs are called the leaf springs. Okay. So leaf springs usually uh, will carry more load, so which we called as a bending load. So if you see the spring, so which is uh, longitudinal in shape, where the plates are subjected to 
point load right so by that the springs are subjected to bending over here right so we have seen springs which are subjected to compression we have seen springs which are subjected to torsion and these leaf springs are subjected to bending okay so like that uh, there are different types of springs which are uh, subjected to different types of loads okay arranged one over the other they are held together by nuts and bolts or clamps they are capable of withstanding large forces in small areas whenever the vehicle encounters a bump it is taken care of by the leaf springs for heavy vehicles helical springs are not preferred because they are not as stable as leaf springs the fifth type of spring is a disc or bell wheel spring these springs are in the shape of a disc when we use a screw there is a round disc shaped metal which is placed before tightening it this disc shaped metal is called the disc or bell wheel spring they are used to bolt the screw from vibrating loose finally we have the special purpose springs these springs are not widely used but are employed only for a specific purpose under this category we have air springs used in vehicle suspension systems gas springs used to damp forces and return kinetic energy greater springs used in oil seals electric connectors etc so that's all about the various types of springs hopefully this video will help you trace the different types of spring in the future what kind of springs do you think are used in mattresses let us know in the comment section below until we meet next time bye okay i hope you all had an uh, you know a brief idea about different types of springs which are available isn't it guys under the idea ochina so what do you mean springs what are the different types of springs available clear yes sir guys please respond yes sir okay then so let me show you another video so which gives more i mean bit more information about springs so by that we can start discussing you know few points on that okay So video can be seen from under. Okay. No sir. No. Okay. Because I don't know. So whether. Can be seen sir. Yeah. If it can be seen, na? Yeah. So can I play now? No sir. Can be checked later. Can be still later. One. Can be still. Yeah. One. So sir, it like chapter one, like my card number, sir. See, see the. మీకు అర్థం కాకపోవడం కాదమ్మా జస్ట్ యూ కెన్ ఏబుల్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ సో ద అప్లికేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద స్ప్రింగ్స్ అట్లీస్ట్ ఓకే సో ఎనీవే దిస్ వీడియో ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు బి అప్లోడెడ్ ఇన్ యూట్యూబ్ వేర్ యూ కెన్ ఏబుల్ టు సీ ద అప్లికేషన్స్ క్లియర్లీ ఓకే దిస్ ఈస్ నాట్ అవర్ లెక్చర్ నేను మీకు లెక్చర్ ఇలా చెప్పేసి క్లోజ్ చేస్తాను అనుకోద్దండి జస్ట్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు షేర్ యూ వేర్ ద స్ప్రింగ్స్ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు బి అప్లికబుల్ సో ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ వీడియోస్ ఇట్ వాస్ క్లియర్లీ షోన్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ స్ప్రింగ్స్ అవైలబుల్ అండ్ వేర్ దో గన్ యూస్డ్ isn't it okay adi ok sir malli meer integral i mean after completion of the class you can just go through the content where you can able to understand the different types of springs and where they are applicable okay so meek just i visualize question nen chupistunnanu ante okay just for time being so then we will discuss about uh, in detail in uh, theoretically so what are the types of springs where they're going to useful uh, what do you mean parallel springs what do you mean series springs which are connected in series springs which are connected in parallel ivanni manu discuss chestam okay just applications gurinchi chupistunnanu meeku mundu aa idea raavadam kosam okay understood ఇప్పుడు కనిపిస్తుందమ్మా వీడియో కనిపిస్తుందా 
and be the laser. So can you see my screen now, which is having two videos and presentation? Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. Uh, you put contest in the video. Video contest in the No, sir. Play at the sir. See, you can play at the level. At least my screen contest in the screen. Yeah, huh? Spring yeah, knowledge is here. Contest in the yeah, okay. So let me play now. Okay, watch this. So by that we can discuss. The Springs training program. This program will cover various aspects related to spring principles and design. In this series, we will cover the most popular... There can be at least. In module one of when, our series... One second. You can turn this on my screen low. Screen on the screen, sir. Why display it, sir? Video is still it should be the in that video can be chin gada under key yes sir yes sir Now, welcome to. You put it? Can I listen? Yeah. Can okay. So, can I play now? Yes, sir. Lee Springs Training Program. This program will cover various aspects related to spring principles and design. In this series, we will cover the most popular type of spring, the compression spring. In Module 1 of our series, you will learn about what a spring is, principles of spring design, spring rates, the primary elements of spring design, the process known as spring setting, and compression type springs. Now, let's get started. To understand springs, it helps to understand what a spring is. A spring is essentially a mechanical object that deforms when acted upon by an external force, and then returns to its original shape when the external force is removed. Each spring design has a unique function, and, in the case of the compression spring, the primary function is to push. Now some basic principles of spring design. There is a principle of spring design known as Hooke's Law, which relates to load and deflection. Essentially, Hooke's Law states that a restoring force due to a spring is proportional to the distance the spring is deflected and acts in the opposite direction. Another important principle related to spring design is spring rate. The spring rate is the ratio of force per unit of deflection. Let's take a further look at spring rates now. Spring rate is a change of load or force per unit deflection as the spring is compressed. As an example, spring rate may be specified as the amount of force to move a spring one inch. A standard helical compression spring has a spring rate that is essentially linear over most of the operating range. The first and last few percent of the spring's deflection has a nonlinear rate. When a spring reaches solid height, the spring coils are at a stop against each other. When talking about spring rates, this is generally the spring rate between 20% and 80% of available deflection. Now let's take a look at some of the design elements related to compression springs. One primary design element is the direction of wind. A coil spring can be wound in either a left hand or right hand direction, similar to a screw type thread. A left hand wound spring will spiral in the same direction as a left hand threaded screw. A right hand wound spring will spiral in the same direction as a right hand threaded screw. Direction of spring wind can be important depending on how the spring is used. To determine the best wind direction, consider the application. For example, coil wind is important when you have one spring working inside of another. 
To keep the springs from binding against one another, the wind of the inner spring and the outer spring should be in opposite directions. If a spring screws into a threaded component, one second, so here the direction of, it is not a wind, okay? You should not pronounce that as a wind, it is a wind. So when you spiral the spring, okay? So when you spiral something, I mean, when you spiral the rod, so we call it this as a winding, okay? So that it, it's called a direction of wind, it is not wind, okay? You have to pronounce it as a wind. Match the direction of wind to the direction of threads. Now that we have looked at how the spring is wound, let's take a look at other design elements. Spring squareness. Spring squareness is defined as the angular difference between the outermost limit of a spring diameter when compared to a straight edge at the right angle to a horizontal flat plate on which the spring is standing. Spring parallelism relates to the ends of the spring and how parallel they are to one another. Now let's take a look at the physical dimensions of the spring, specifically spring diameter. Spring diameter is often referenced in a couple of different ways. One method is the outside diameter, or OD. This dimension is important when the spring is used within a cavity. Another dimension is the inside diameter, or ID. This dimension is important for springs that work over a rod or shaft. The next type of diameter is the mean diameter, which is most often used for calculations for stress and deflection. Free length is the overall spring length in the free or unloaded position. If definite loads are specified, the free length should be an approximate dimension, which may be varied to meet the load requirements. Spring index is defined as the ratio of the mean diameter to the wire diameter. A high index spring would have a smaller wire diameter and a higher spring diameter, similar to a light pressure spring. A low index spring would have a larger wire diameter and a lower spring diameter, similar to a hefty spring. Load is the force required to compress the spring to a specific height, rather than the amount of force to move the spring a specific unit, like spring rate. Load differs from spring rate in that spring rate is the amount of force to move the spring in increments, where load is the amount of force to move the spring to a specific height. Another important element is a spring's solid height. The solid height is a dimension of a spring when all the coils are closed. This dimension, if critical to an application, should be specified as a maximum dimension. The number of coils should be specified as a reference figure and should be stated whether it refers to the total coils, which includes all coils including those which are used to form the ends and may not deflect under load, or the active coils, which are those coils which are free to deflect under load. Pitch is a dimension related to the distance between the centers of adjacent coils. Now we will look at what physically happens to a compression spring after manufacturing. Prior to the first compression, a spring's free height may be longer than the specified height. This is common during the manufacture of springs and can be compensated for in two ways. A spring can be built with free length, which has an allowance for set. This involves compensating for the length loss when a spring is fully compressed for the very first time. Another method is known as removing the set, also known as presetting or a set spring. This is an additional manufacturing step that may be done to ensure that the spring is at the correct free height for use. This process is done by compressing the spring to the solid height. A set spring's new free length will now be stable and consistent throughout the future compression cycles. Now let's take a look at spring ends. This first spring has a closed end, where the end coil's pitch is reduced so the end coils touch. The next spring has an open end, where the coils are consistent with no pitch change through the end of the spring. Another end type for compression springs are the not ground type and ground type. As you will notice, the ground end type spring is ground flat, where the not ground type has a less parallel end. Compression springs can come in any variety of shapes. Custom designs may have any number of shapes depending on the application. Some common custom shapes include the cone shape, where the spring radius decreases. This is common for a battery spring. An hourglass shape tapers tighter toward the center, 
and the outer coils have a larger diameter. The barrel shape is reduced at the ends and wider in the center. The reduced end spring is straight across the center coils and tapers only toward the end coils. There are some other compression springs to be aware of that are available. The Hefty series, which are die springs ideal for high stress, heavy load applications. The Redux Wave Spring. These springs are spotlighted in detail in another presentation, but essentially, this design is excellent in applications where the space is critical. This unique design generally occupies 30% to 50% of the compressed height of a conventional round wire spring. The Light Pressure Spring. These springs are suitable for applications requiring low spring rates and low pressure. Lee Spring carries a wide range of stock springs and has engineers available to support custom designs. No matter what your spring needs are, you can count on Lee Spring to provide you with the highest level of customer service and engineering support. If you would like to learn more, view our other spring knowledge sessions. Refer to our catalog. Okay, right. Uh, so this is what I would like to show before I start my lecture. So where it gonna, you know, um, give bit idea about what are the different types of springs, you know? So usually how the springs was defined, what is the nomenclature of the spring in all aspects, okay? So in that way, I think, I hope you all understood the concept. You all understood what exactly the springs, isn't it? Right? Springs and our knowledge is the idea of the Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, under key. So I want response from everyone. Ever can I saw you video? Yes, so yes, these videos are useful to understand yes, the concepts or not? Before my lecture, before starting any any concepts. See. Yes, sir. So, right. Okay then. So I think this session is going to end in three minutes. What I do is I request all of you. So please log in again in the same ID. Okay. So by that we can continue for the next 40 minutes again. So there is only three minutes left for the session. I'm going to end the session. Okay. So I'm going to come back with the same link. So you can also come back with the same link. So by that we can continue the next hour also. Okay. Na? Right. So then the end just na number. So mali the link to mali under login number. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. I'm ending this. Okay, sir.